we're here today to hear from uh, from Commissioner Jamie Ree, uh, head of Chicago's Department of Aviation. Um, I, I have a bio and it's quite impressive, um, but I'm not going to read from it because I, I know Jamie. Um, I've known Jamie for 20 years now and uh, over 20 years now. We were both 17, um, <laughs> 18. <laughs> and I know many of you have for, for many years and a written bio is just not going to cut it for Jamie. <laughs> and uh, we all know that. She is a dynamo leader that, uh, that we're so lucky to have here in, in Chicago. Um, she's successfully run one of the world's most complex airport systems. Uh, I couldn't even tell you how many years, but over three mayors, which is a feat in and of itself, <laughs> um, especially here in, in, in Chicago. Um, Jamie's one of the smartest, uh, loyal, uh, most dedicated, fair, inclusive. I mean, these are these are all. This is just who Jamie is. Um, passionate, honest. One of the best civil servants I've ever come across in um, in my 20 years of of understanding Chicago, and. Um, more importantly than that, uh, she's a great friend uh, to, to so many of us, um, but also a great husband to Mike, um, or I'm sorry, a great wife, <laughs> to, her, to her husband, Mike. <laughs> and most importantly, of course, um, wonderful mother to Jazzy, who we're so excited is uh, officially uh, now in, in their life forever. So um, please join me in welcoming Commissioner Jamie Reed. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it is such a pleasure to be here with you today. And, you know, thank you so much um, to Dan for that introduction. And so uh, nice to see people in person and get that uh, get get back to getting to to the normalcy that we all are really hoping to have um, this year. So um, hopefully this is the first of many in person engagements that we'll get to to be able to start that open dialogue again. And and I think that's really been missing for the last couple of years is that human interaction and and really fostering ideas and and uh, promoting networking and and um, relationship building. So um, we're really excited to be here. So. Thank you so much for having me. As Dan just said, I currently have the honor and the privilege of serving as the Commissioner of the Chicago Department of Aviation, or CDA as we like to call ourselves. And on behalf of Mayor Lightfoot and the entire CDA community, it is an honor to be with you here today and to discuss what's been happening at our airports. And there's a lot going on. Needless to say, it's a very exciting time at Chicago's airports. Despite the challenges of the last couple of years, Development continues to meet construction milestones and invest in the economic growth of the city of Chicago. We're nearing completion of the Midway Modernization Program, which broke ground in 2017 and is the most significant capital program at Midway in nearly 20 years. This program has created thousands of new opportunities and jobs for our Chicago community. And as we elevate the passenger experience and prepare for future growth, we plan to do that through the new security checkpoint over Cicero Avenue, the recently completed enhancements to the terminal parking garage, and our concessions program redevelopment, which highlights many local businesses. And at O'Hare, we've also been very busy. In 2020, we completed our last full build runway, 9 Center, 27 Center. Then last year, we completed the entire O'Hare modernization program with the extension of 9 Right. Now, looking out into this crowd, I just want to extend a huge thank you because so many of you played such a critical part in both of these programs over the years and we could not have done it without you. So before we get things going, let's give yourselves a round of applause. Also, our airport transit system, or ATS, is now transporting passengers to and from um, O'Hare's terminals, the long-term parking, and the new multimodal facility and providing yet another point of access to our airports through the Metro stop located there. I saw Jim here earlier. I'm very excited about that. The work continues, and I'm excited to soon show you a video of the impressive construction currently happening in Terminal 5. 
And with our construction and design teams in place, last but not least, in partnership with the FAA, we are nearing completion of the terminal area environmental assessment. Once we have the completed EA and have completed this important process, construction on our terminal uh, complex will really take off. Infrastructure has never been more critical to our nation and our region, and replacing aging infrastructure is just as important now as it was before the pandemic. President Biden's recently passed federal infrastructure legislation, or the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, or bill as it's called, is providing unprecedented investment in Chicago's airports. We are grateful for the presidents and the Congresses, especially that of our Illinois delegation, for the recognition and the importance of infrastructure and look forward to implementing important projects that expand and modernize transportation facilities, create work for Chicago land businesses of all sizes and types, increase employment opportunities, all made possible by this very important legislation. But please know that while this investment is essential, infrastructure development is happening right now at our airports, and we have projects of all sizes and types. We're extremely fortunate in Chicago that the scope of our capital programs are very closely aligned with that of the eligibility and the goals of the bipartisan infrastructure law. As we wait for further guidance from the Federal Aviation Administration, we are evaluating on how best to utilize the bill funds to augment our existing airport capital programs. But what we do know right now is that these projects will follow the legislation's goals to address aging infrastructure, enhance accessibility, and improve overall access and connectivity between airport and surface transportation facilities. And we are learning from this pandemic, ensuring that emerging technologies such as improved air circulation, sanitization, no-touch amenities, and H&R plant investments are integrated into our existing terminal plans. The additional federal funds through Bill over the next five years, over $350 million at O'Hare and almost $100 million for Midway, will be utilized so that upcoming projects continue to move forward to, to retain those key elements that improve efficiency, maintain Chicago's strength as a hub for airlines, reduce energy use through sustainable efforts, increase access for everyone, and to further enhance the already $70 billion in economic impact contributed annually by our airports to our region. Out of all of these priorities, one of the most important priorities for us is access to our airports. One in five adult Americans has a special need, and that number is projected to increase as the population ages. Therefore, we're focused on increasing accessibility and meeting the needs of all passengers. One of my very first goals as commissioner in 2018 was to establish an airport accessibility task force in partnership with the mayor's office for people with disabilities. This task force meets regularly since 2019 to receive input in real time from travelers with disabilities and discuss ways to make Chicago's airports more accessible. We are consulting with experts to go above and beyond ADA requirements to provide unmatched access to all of our terminal public spaces and facilities identified for modernization. We are taking every opportunity during critical infrastructure efforts that you will hear about in this presentation to review designs and upgrade accessibility wherever possible. For example, and probably many of you have seen, O'Hare's Terminals 1, 2, and 3, the lower level utility work is taking place now. While we're doing that though, the curbsides are being rebuilt with elevated crosswalks. And over at Midway, the improvements to the parking structure have upgraded pavement and ramps. These developments took place after a design review with our accessibility task force and collaborative process with the mayor's office with people with disabilities and Commissioner Arfa to bring best practices and ideas home to meet the needs of all travelers. Being cognizant that traveling with children can also be difficult, we are also trying to address those challenges. We are improving the facilities offered to nursing mothers by installing accessible Mamava lactation units in both of our airports. So far, we've installed two out of the 11. Another area that needs our attention and investment is the integration and the connectivity of our airports with the region's transportation network. To that end, we are working with the CTA to improve capacity and accessibility at the O'Hare Blue Line and the Midway Orange Line rail stations. Whatever your challenge may be, the city of Chicago is coming up with ways to provide equal access to our airports for everyone. And speaking of improvements, at the busiest square mile of aviation, Midway International Airport, our Midway modernization program is almost complete. Recent investments at Midway have resulted in increased efficiency and enhanced customer experience. 
In 2020, we completed the construction of Midway's new 80,000 square foot, foot uh, security pavilion. It opened rather quietly during the pandemic, but now passengers are benefiting from the TSA throughput that has doubled from 2,500 an hour to 5,000 passengers. Upgrades are also complete at the terminal parking structure, include the parking access revenue control system and modernizations to elevators and automatic doors. And enhancements have been made with a new inline baggage handling system, apron pavement upgrades, and improvements to our federal inspection system and customs hall. Further, no contact services help maintain the safety and security of our airport community with PPE vending machines and clear biometric screen security screenings as well as providing low touch updates to our concession options with new mobile food ordering services that let users place orders for pickup from nearby restaurants. And the largest Hudson nonstop store to date provides travelers with a quicker way to shop using Am Amazon's Just Walk Out technology. And you may notice also that our customer service volunteers have returned to the airport. We are very excited to welcome them back. And of course, modernization is also happening at O'Hare. After 16 years of continuous runway construction, the O'Hare Modernization Program is complete with the opening of runway nine right, 27 left in December of 2021. Through the OMP, we have built four new runways, extended two existing runways, constructed two new air traffic control towers, relocated numerous facilities, and sound insulated over 11,500 homes and 124 schools. I am so proud that I have the privilege of participating at the OMP at several stages from start to finish. I was lucky enough to be here during the record of decision and the first runway opening in 2008. And I'm honored to have been this commissioner when we celebrated the project's completion. The construction of runway nine center alone created an estimated 2,700 full-time jobs. And over the life of OMP, more than 29,000 construction jobs and 5,000 professional services jobs are estimated to have been created. The OMP has a strong track record of inclusion with over $970 million or 31% of the total program performed by certified firms. Since the beginning of OMP, national airspace system impact delays, things like late arriving aircraft, weather conditions, which we have some here in Chicago, <laughs> airport operations or heavy traffic volume have been reduced by 65%, validating this critical investment. This par parallel runway configuration is not only more efficient, but is also safer than the antiquated intersecting runway configuration that it replaced. The modernized airfield gives us the most runways of any commercial airport in the world. And this balanced airfield allows the Fly Quiet program to strive towards a more balanced air traffic flow to ensure that not one single community bears the brunt of aircraft noise. The CDA has one of the largest, most accomplished noise programs in the world and is committed to minimizing aircraft noise impacts on the neighboring communities of both O'Hare and Midway airports. Over the years, CDA has engaged stakeholders to develop and enhance our nose noise abatement programs. We have a network of 53 aircraft noise monitors in the surrounding communities of both airports. And we have implemented one of the most aggressive residential and school sound insulation programs in the world. To date, we've sound insulated nearly 22,000 homes and 165 schools near O'Hare and Midway with a total investment over, over a billion dollars. We will continue to collaborate with regional leaders on constructive dialogue and remain committed to both the O'Hare Noise Compatibility Commission and the Midway Noise Compatibility Commission now over 25 years old. And now O'Hare 21. The city of Chicago's vision for the airport's long-term development plan is well underway. O'Hare 21 is a series of major capital projects which will elevate the customer experience and improve operational efficiencies to ensure O'Hare's continued growth and strong competitive position in the years to come. We have been working hard to implement several of these projects, including the Concourse L expansion, the first new gates at O'Hare since Terminal 5 opened in 1993, the construction of our recently opened multimodal facility, and the extension and modernization of the airport transit system. And we remain grateful to the airlines for the execution of the 2018 Airline Use and Lease Agreement which approved $8.5 billion of capital improvements to enhance, expand, and replace aging facilities. 
Oftentimes with construction projects, sometimes we're required to take a step back in order to ultimately take three steps forward. This is certainly true in the main terminal complex where our curbsides and roadways have been in construction since the summer of 2020, where while we replace 60-year-old water mains and electrical cabling. Underground, we have been rebuilding the seven pedestrian tunnels that connect the terminals to the parking garage, the CTA Blue Line, and the O'Hare Hilton. And this has been no easy feat. Water infiltration that had built up over decades now requires a comprehensive project to upgrade the tunnel before we are able to replace the architectural finishes. And I'm pleased to say that four of these tunnels have now reopened and the remaining three will open this spring. These difficult projects admittedly create disruptions to the airport operations, but they are essential to providing safe, secure, and passenger-friendly facilities well into the future. And, at, and we at the CDA have also, and will continue to work with our, closely with our federal and our airline partners to implement these complex projects, balancing responsible fiscal stewardship, the desire for fast improvements, and the needs of day-to-day -day operations for travelers. We're also improving access for planes, trains, and automobiles through our own projects and those of our partners. With its modernization and extension, O'Hare's completed ATS better connects Metra, PACE, and regional bus services to the terminals. And I know City Club, we like to make announcements, so I'm gonna make one here today. <laughs> Pleased to announce, and you're hearing it for the first time here, that starting today, we have expanded our service to 5 a.m. to 10.30 p.m., and that's an extra five and a half hours of revenue service every day on our ATS. So we're moving in the right direction. <clears throat> This fully automated train system supports passengers to and from the terminals to the multimodal facility, economy, parking lot F, the kiss and fly lot, pace buses, and Metra. And anyone who has driven in and out of O'Hare knows that there's only one way in and one way out. In order to address the resulting congestion, further access will be provided through the Illinois Department of Transportation's I-190 improvements. These improvements will streamline roadways and eliminate the merging and weaving that currently occurs at our front door. And to further improve mobility to and from and surrounding O'Hare, the Illinois Toll Board of Directors last week approved a key agreement with the City of Chicago to construct the I-490 tollway. As we speak, Mayor Lightfoot is introducing an ordinance to City Council that will provide a clear path forward toward the jobs, contract opportunities, and improved access for this project. A huge debt of gratitude goes to the entire tollway team, the executive director, Jose Alvarez, um, and the steadfast commitment that he had to making sure that we partnered together to deliver this very critical um, project, as well as our own CDA team, who spent countless hours working to make sure that we deliver. Not only will the I-490 tollway divert traffic and alleviate airport congestion, it will also provide access to the future Western employee parking and screening. And for those who use public transportation, one of our favorite ways to get to O'Hare, we continue to work with CTA on improvements to the Blue Line station. Now back to the airfield. With the reconstruction of our runways through the OMP, we are now focusing on the main taxiway artery around the terminal complex, taxiways A and B. Portions of these will be rehabilitated, while other portions will be relocated to make room for our new concourses. And boy, are we extremely excited about the new concourses. These terminal projects are critical for maintaining O'Hare's strength as a hub for airlines, promoting competition by addressing capacity constraints, extending the life of our existing facilities, and providing efficient and enjoyable experiences for travelers. A special thanks to our partners at the FAA for their continued work and support on the modernization of our airports. We've been working very closely with the FAA since I came in in 2018 working on our environmental assessment. And as I said, we do expect to get approval sometime at the end of the year. Upon completion of the EA, we will have the approval to build the O'Hare Global Terminal and the two satellite concourses. Terminal 2 will be redeveloped into a new fully integrated O'Hare Global Terminal, or OGT, to serve international and domestic passengers. It will also improve connectivity to Terminals 1 and 3 for an ease of passenger transfer and connection. Additional concourse square footage will provide more space for concessions, departure lounges, and public amenities, as well as upgraded security screening, which will significantly reduce wait times. Two satellite concourses will also be built to the west of OGT. 
These investments will increase the ability to accommodate international arriving flights, expanding the airport's versatility. Further, these new gates are designed to accommodate the current aircraft and be flexible enough to support the aircraft of the future. Our most exciting current construction updates are taking place in Terminal 5, where the CDA is investing more than $1 billion to expand and modernize the facilities. Construction is evident in multiple areas, and the renovations will open in phases throughout this year and into 2023. Upon completion, the expanded Terminal 5 will add approximately 350,000 square feet, increase gate capacity by 25%, replace the baggage handling system and increase passenger amenity space by 70%, 75%, and premium lounge space by 70%. And we are working with the Department of Cultural Affairs and Special Events, or DCASE, on a $3.5 million acquisition of public art by local Chicago artists, the largest such procurement by the city in nearly 30 years. We are also completing design on the new Terminal 5 multi-story parking garage. The new elevated parking structure will replace our current surface parking lot, nearly double the number of spaces offered, and expand capacity to offer similar parking facilities at Terminal 5 as those provided in the, at the main terminals, with a mix of short and long-term parking. We anticipate breaking ground on this exciting project in the spring. But this project, like so many, has required us to take a step back and endure some inconvenience while we can realize something better than what we have today. We make every effort to minimize disruptions to our employees and to our passengers and have them both in mind as we plan the ultimate benefits for these projects. And now I'd love to show you a short walkthrough of the significant progress that we've made in our construction efforts. As we move through this video, you can see the progression of the expansion. You can see the structural steel for the expansion is in place. And please note the new ramp control tower under construction. I'd also like to draw your attention to the temporary concourse that was built directly parallel to the terminal extension under construction. You can see not only the complexity of this project, but the coordination required to allow carriers to continue service out of those gates while construction advances. The roof is completed and the windows are being installed, allowing for commencement of the interior work. High ceilings, lots of windows and an abundance of natural light create a much different feel than the old Terminal 5 building. And this extension provides for the new Delta Sky Club Lounge, expanded hold rooms, and additional airline club space. And these renderings provide an idea of what the final construction will look like, a light breezy space that is not only more efficient, but more welcoming. We look forward to introducing you to the new modernized Terminal 5, which is scheduled to land soon. I was there. Uh... I was there in um, 1993 when Terminal 5 opened, so it's such a treat to be here once again. <laughs> I'm dating myself, Dan. <laughs> As we all know, our airports are economic engines and capital developments are a proven way to support job creation, economic stimulation, and capacity building for businesses of all sizes and types. And at the Department of Aviation, we are not only focused on what we are building, but who will be doing the building. And no one knows and appreciates the power of procurement to create opportunities across our communities more than Mayor Lori Lightfoot. It's a vision that I share for a more equitable and inclusive city. It inspires and guides the work that we do in our department each and every day. From my earliest days as commissioner, I have maintained a steadfast commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I've challenged my team to reimagine how contracts are conceived and awarded at our airports. Our O'Hare 21 program delivery team highlights CDA's commitment to equity and inclusion throughout the project from start to finish. The program management, design, and engineering teams represent diversity, providing opportunities for firms of all sizes and ownership structures. In fact, as you can see, our professional services team feature 18 WBE and 40 MBE firms, many of which are joint venture partners, and 26 serving as protégés through the city's mentoring program, above and way above and beyond what was required. And then on our construction side, our construction managers at risk, or our CMARs, have robust joint venture teams as well. As you can see, these JVs are maximizing opportunities for firms of all sizes, as well as new entrants into the airport. 
We've also worked together with the Department of Procurement Services and the Office of the Inspector General to set up a system of integrity monitors for each of the CMARs to monitor the compliance throughout the project. This program is not only creating opportunities for diverse certified firms of all sizes, but also getting them a seat at the leadership table. In order to bring about the increase in diversity, equity, inclusion to which the Mayor, Light, Mayor Lightfoot is deeply committed as I am, capacity has to be created with intentionality. We began O'Hare 21 fully invested and committed to making sure that every firm, large and small, understood the commitment to create opportunities for businesses of all sizes to benefit from this historic development. But we also know that there is a lot more work to do. And at the CDA, we will never be satisfied, but intend to build upon our results to create further economic impact for communities across our entire city and beyond. As you've seen, our current major construction project is happening in Terminal 5. And at Terminal 5, we've seen the success of partnering. A joint venture between three firms resulted in an award of a $45 million for an HVAC system to an MBE veteran-owned JV partners. Another example is the structural steel that you saw in the video. That structural steel was provided by a joint venture between a large company and an MBE company resulting in an award of $30 million. So these are big projects, but for those that are out there looking for something of a different size, Hard work is still being done to unbundle exclusive contracting opportunities for small and diverse businesses. And while this process can take some time, we're well on our way. We are unbundling packages so that smaller firms have opportunities to prime with us through the small and mid-sized business initiative programs. Since the award of our CMARS, 34 contracts totaling over $100 million have been earmarked for SBIs and MBIs with many more in development. This is the first time many of these critical airport services are being bid out this way. We are also working very closely with our three CMARs early on in the design process to ensure discrete scopes and opportunities for businesses of all sizes and backgrounds are created. And as bids are issued, in addition to our efforts, we engage the help of elected officials and the city's nearly 40 assist agencies to communicate these opportunities to their members. By unbundling work into smaller packages, we've created a pipeline for small companies to take on a prime role and build capacity. This body of work that will occur over at O'Hare over the next decade will continue to provide this pipeline through capacity building and unbundling programs. After spending so many years in procurement and having the honor and privilege of meeting so many businesses of all types and sizes, I understand that not all challenges are created equal. So no matter the size of your business, there is an opportunity for you at the Chicago Department of Aviation. To help businesses find the right opportunities, we offer many resources to companies interested in working with us to develop and to improve our airports. And for those just starting out, a good place to start is the CDA's Bid and Resource Center, one of the first things that we built when I became commissioner in 2018. This resource center provides hands-on technical assistance to contractors, tradespeople, and construction professionals, including information on upcoming bid opportunities, how to pre-qualify to bid with one of our construction managers at risk, copies of our latest how to do business guidebooks and other publications, plans for current bid opportunities, and of course, calendars for upcoming trainings and workshops. Now, our CMARs are fierce competitors, but one thing that they all have in common is their commitment to inclusion. In addition to the CDA's resources, the CMARs each have developed their own resources and assistance programs, such as the Aviation Learning Series, partnerships with the JLM Life Center on Chicago's West Side, and the Urban Alliance High School Internship Program. As Mayor Lightfoot has made it very clear, we could not, and we did not, allow COVID to derail our commitment to equity and inclusion, and we didn't. And in 2021, more than $296 million was spent with certified diverse firms. That's a 37% of all of the spend. And it's a $77 million increase over what we spent in 2020. But we couldn't have done this alone. For example, early on in the pandemic, we partnered with the Department of Procurement Services and the Department of Law to leverage our CARES Act funds to create a program to support the 40 assist agencies for the city to help small and diverse businesses impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. See, we understand that we don't know everything a small business needs, but the assist agencies understand what their members need and they're able to tailor programs to meet those needs. 
And we are proud to report that we have 10 different programs underway currently and still many more in the works, which offer everything from back office training support to working as a concessionaire at Chicago's airports to a CMAR university, which will be opened on the south and the west sides of Chicago and everything in between. I am very proud of what we've accomplished, but there's a lot more work ahead of us. In addition to construction and professional services, concessions have long provided opportunities for diverse businesses of all sizes to gain a foothold. In fact, O'Hare achieved a 44% ACDBE participation rate, the highest in a decade at O'Hare. And over at Midway, we've reached the highest reported ACDBE participation rate for any airport in the country at 56%. In addition, the CDA has one of the highest goals among U.S. airports for the ACDB participation at 32%, far exceeding the FAA's requirement of 10%. We are proud of the success of our programs, and we have been recognized by the FAA Office of Civil Rights for our DBE and our ACDBE programs. To further support our concessionaires and help build workforce, we've launched an online job portal to help offer a convenient way to apply for concessions employment opportunities for both O'Hare and Midway. And we've also helped to promote various other hiring events and job fairs for the entire airport community. And to further demonstrate our commitment to diversity and inclusion, we're excited to announce that Chicago has been chosen to host the Airport Minority Advisory Council's 37th annual airport Business Diversity Conference, June 20th through the 23rd of this year. The theme this year is redefining aviation opportunities together, reimagining how we do business to keep diversity and inclusion at the forefront. The opportunities in aviation are endless, and AMAC is dedicated to advancing the full participation of minorities and women in employment and contracting opportunities throughout the aviation industry. We are really excited to host this very important event and hope that you can join us. Our airports are recovering. We are close to gaining all of our destinations back and are working with our airline partners on the frequency of service as passenger traffic returns. Despite these turbulent fat past two years, O'Hare is still among the busiest airports in the world by operations. Chicago remains a hub for three US airlines serving almost the same number of domestic destinations as they did pre-COVID. And while O'Hare finished second in total operations for 2021 behind Atlanta, they don't have snow. So it's real hard for a direct comparison. And I let them know that every time I see them. But what I can report is that we were the busiest in terms of operations for the second half of 2021, which furthers our optimism for recovery. The airlines are continuing to invest and show confidence in the Chicago market, as we can see through all the new air service. Chicago plays a critical role for three of the four largest US airlines, United and American at O'Hare and Southwest at Midway. There's been a lot of new service happening at O'Hare. In 2021, United and American began service to five new destinations. And Southwest extended service in 2021 to O'Hare in addition to its service in Midway. And two Canadian carriers will start brand new services between O'Hare and Toronto in May of 2022. And at Midway, Allegiant Air started service mid-pandemic. And Frontier Airlines announced the intent to begin service in addition to the O'Hare service and will initially serve eight destinations from Midway. As of April of 2022, three airlines will operate dual operations out of both airports, Southwest, Frontier, and Delta. Our airports are seeing returns from our investment in air service and we are continuing that investment. And to further showcase our iconic city and continue to ensure great connectivity from Chicago to destinations across the world, we are pleased to announce that last week that Chicago will be hosting Roots America 2023. This annual event brings together airlines, airports, and tourism authorities to discuss air service strategy and future networks that will take place on the 21st to the 23rd of March 2023. Although 2021 had a bit of a rough start with passenger volumes, our airports are beginning to get closer to pre-pandemic volumes of 2019. Domestic leisure travel at Chicago's airports, for the most part, has returned back. However, our airports are feeling the worldwide impact that the pandemic has had on the business travel. The U.S. Travel Association expects that an inflection point in business demand to come around mid-year and has forecasted demand to improve 80% of 2019 levels later in 2022. 
before finally recovering in 2023 to 95%. And as this recovery occurs, we anticipate that Chicago will continue to be a leader in this sector based on our strong O&D market and our mid-continent location. And as COVID-related travel restrictions are lessened, international travel is expected to return to pre-pandemic levels. For Chicago, like many other airport hubs, full recovery in passenger levels is dependent upon how fast business and international traffic recovers. However, we are optimistic as O'Hare and Midway are well positioned to fully rebound and with our investments, ultimately grow activity. Our air two airport system and geographic location are critical to the air traffic network across the nation and the entire world. O'Hare has historically been one of the busiest airports in the world, not for just passengers, but also for cargo operations. And while our passenger traffic is recovering, our cargo has been soaring. Thanks to significant investments in the O'Hare airfield and commercial infrastructure supporting air cargo operations, we have continued to see record air cargo volume during the pandemic. O'Hare performed a key role during throughout the pandemic in keeping critical supply chains moving, handling emergency supplies, and facilitating the huge burst in e-commerce. In order to keep up, we're expanding O'Hare's Northeast cargo facility with a certified MBE as the construction manager. Cargo is not the only important from an, air, from an economic uh, perspective but it's also, and the delivery of goods, but it's also a huge driver of employment opportunities. Approximately 5,000 jobs are created at O'Hare Airport and they're related to the operations and these employees have been dedicated in helping keep our economy moving. It's been a long two years since the entire world, including the aviation industry, was rocked by the COVID-19 pandemic. And I just can't state, overstate my gratitude towards Mayor Lightfoot, whose leadership and clarity of vision has served this city so well, as well as Dr. Allison Arwadi of the Chicago Department of Public Health. This has obviously been a challenging time, but we will be forever grateful for Mayor Lightfoot's steady and sensible guidance. And I'm extremely honored, privileged to work with her and lead the Department of Aviation. And I'm grateful for the talented team that I have the honor of working with each and every day. We are over 1,700 strong from every corner, from every neighborhood of this great city. And we take enormous pride in our mission to safely connecting Chicago to the wider world. I am tremendously proud of the frontline staff that kept our airports running throughout these very challenging times. And I can't thank them enough. We literally could not have done it without them. And of course, we couldn't fulfill our mission without our tremendous support from our airline partners the federal and health agencies, our contractors, the men and women of organized labor, the elected officials and numerous city departments that support the CDA each and every day. A special thanks to Chairman Matt O'Shea and Vice Chair Derek Curtis, the members of the Committee on Aviation and the entire city council. We are grateful for their tireless support and engagement with our programs and legislation. And while challenges remain, better days are certainly ahead and we are going to get there together. Thank you so much for your time today, and I look forward to some Q&A. Thank you. I will get to a couple questions. It never, <laughs> never ceases to amaze me, the economic impact, the, thousands, the tens of thousands of jobs, and those are people with families that are working. That's what's making this economy work, so thank you for pointing that out and, and leading all of that. Um, a couple of questions here. Uh, Kevin, F Kevin Fuhrer is a member, thank you Kevin, of City Club um, with Harson Professional Services. Uh, his question first, congrats on um, your Genesco High School Hall of Fame Genesio. induction. Kevin and Genesio. I are ah. the same high school. <laughs> See, like I knew, I knew many of you had known Jamie for a long time. Uh, Hall of Fame induction uh, at Genesco High School. So congratulations on that. Go Green Machine. Uh, second, we're we're seeing the development of, of urban mo air mobility, advanced air mobility facilities on both coasts. What is CDA doing to help plan and coordinate and spur development of these? facilities in Chicago and the surrounding region. Mm -hmm. Got it? 
Yeah, thank you. Um, we are obviously very excited about a lot of the technology that is emerging and um, really look forward to uh, once we decide what infrastructure needs to be in place, we're certainly prepared to build that. Um, we maintain close, obviously, connections with our Federal Aviation Administration that will have to approve um, these aircraft and let us know what rules and, and um, policies and procedures will come with them. Um, but we are well positioned. And, and as I said, any of all of the building that we're doing right now, we're doing with a mind of being flexible, um, especially uh, the way that we look at our gates and, and using some of the you know multiple apron ramp systems or Mars gates that they call them, which are interchangeable now and, and really reimagining what the airport of the future is going to look like. So there's a substantial amount of work being being done um, on all air mobility. Um, and we uh, work very closely with ACI and AAAE, our airport industry um, experts, to make sure that we're keeping up with pace. Thanks. So next one from uh, Hardy Bott, uh, another City Club member, thank you, uh, with SDI presence. Uh, with all the construction, how are you making sure the technology keeps pace with all that construction? Well, technology is always changing. And one thing like I did learn from my years in procurement is government always doesn't do a good job of making sure that we're on the cutting edge. And so um, that has been a very intentional um, and deliberate process that we've set up. We have our own CIO, um, Diego Ferrer, who, uh, who manages all of our IT within the department, but we're also connected with AIS, who has um, responsibility for the entire city. So we work very closely to ensure that. Also on each of our CMAR teams, we are very fortunate to have um, uh, some of their partners that are are also technology companies to offer that real-time um, uh, recommendations to us as we're designing the new projects of the future. And I have one uh, for myself. <laughs> uh, as, as we all travel, we see different airports, and, and I know cities share best practices, and airports do as well. Um, any airports of the future that, are, that you've had your eye on that, um, that may provide some inspiration for things that you'd like to do here? And... Um, any ideas that, that we can all bring back from our travels uh, to to help yeah. you know improve our experience? So in good Chicago fashion, I steal something from every airport that I go to. So I look around and I see what they have and I take pictures and I bring it back here. So we slap our logo on it and call it our own. Um, that's what we do. So um, no, but there are many and, and I'm very fortunate to be on the U.S. Policy Council for um, ACI and also their finance committee. Um, and so really having that interaction and the close contact with um, other leaders at other airports is, is extremely advantageous for Chicago. Um, and so we're kind constantly looking for that. And if people have heard me speak, I always give homework to everyone. And that is when you see something, send it to me. Um, I have cards here. So if you need my address, my email address, it's my name at City of Chicago. It hasn't changed in 25 years, maybe 30. Um, but please feel free to send me those along if you have any ideas. I mean, we're looking at everything and we want to make sure that we are um, using this time wisely as we're designing um, to see what else we can integrate. Sensory rooms, children's play areas, open spaces, green spaces. There's all kinds of, of different um, things that we could be doing um, to further enhance our airport's amenities and customer service experience. And so I would challenge each of you to come back with some ideas. If you see anything out there um, that you'd like us to take a look at, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, and then lastly, of course, I'll just say that if there's ever anyone, um, I used to say this in procurement when I was um, there, that if, if you hear someone that's complaining that they're not getting what they need or that they can't get the answer that they need from the city, let us know so that we can do something about it. Because telling everybody else, um, um, instead of telling the folks that actually can hopefully make a difference and do something about it, um, that's that's where we need to get to so that we're actually addressing the needs of the community. Um, I have a very open door policy, always have, um, and invite uh, constructive criticism as well as ideas or any, um, any other uh, comments or issues that people want to discuss. So we're very open to that. So please take advantage of me and my entire team. And thank you. And I have one, one more here. If anyone does have a question, please just raise your hand up um, and we'll come and collect it as I ask the, uh, the, the last written question here. Uh, and this is from Don Zofel, who's not a City Club member, but uh, we can make sure you learn how to sign up. <laughs> Don. 
<laughs> um, Don's from uh, a Crow's Nest uh, Consulting. Uh, and by the way, seriously though, a City Club membership is is, is very affordable. It's it's great when you your corporate members step up and, and spend a little extra to allow you and, and your colleagues to uh, to come to these events and participate. But individual memberships are incredibly uh, uh, affordable, and um, hopefully everyone will consider doing that over the next over the next year. Um, on the website, of course, is the best way to, to find that. Um, Don's question, uh, I understand there may, uh, I did mention Crow's, yeah, Crow's Nest Consulting. I understand there may be a new concessions package for T5. Any thought on when that might open up? Um, so we did recently um, bid out and actually received 47 proposals uh, for the new space. Uh, again, we're adding 350,000 square feet to Terminal 5, so we need new amenities. And i um, happy to report that, that uh, those evaluations are ongoing and we will have something ready when uh, Delta is ready to move in in the third quarter of this year. Um, but there will be additional opportunities always. Um, we are looking at reimagining, obviously, Terminals 1, 2, and 3. Um, it's going to obviously undergo a lot of, uh, of work over the next several years. And so we're really working with our airlines um, to sort of reimagine what those concession packages look like too. So there will be more opportunities coming in the future. Okay, great. Thank you. Obviously there's so much going on, which is why you need so much energy. And I know you've got a great team uh, behind you. So thank you for, for that, Commissioner. <laughs>